Colin O'Keefe here for LXPN TV. President Barack Obama has faced intense scrutiny as of late as his promise that individuals could keep their existing health insurance plans under the Affordable Care Act has proved untrue. He has since made major efforts to reconcile this presumed misstep. Joining me now to explain exactly what happened, we have Aaron Detling. He's an attorney with Balch and Bingham in Birmingham and is author on the firm's blog, The ACA Review. Aaron, first off, can you walk us through the specifics of President Obama's change in policy? What do we know about this so far? Sure, Colin. Thank you. Um, as you and your, your viewers know, uh, most of the more consequential parts of the Affordable Care Act were set to go into effect this January 1st, 2014. Uh, there are some that are delayed even further, but the employer mandate was set to take effect this January. It's been pushed to 2015. The exchanges, the refundable tax credits, the essential health benefits, all were slated to take effect uh, this January of 2014. Um, and uh, what, what happened was that insurance companies, if they weren't able to maintain the um, grandfather status of their individual plans, um, they were essentially forced to cancel them because they wouldn't be able to offer them uh, any longer if they weren't uh, if they weren't grandfathered. They would have to meet all of the new requirements of, of the Affordable Care Act. Um, this uh, evidently took some folks by surprise. Uh, the cancellation letters went out. And so, uh, it, and you referenced the, uh, the media coverage that attended that. Um, so what the president did in the uh, CMS Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services did last Thursday was they said that they're going to afford basically, you might call it a grace period, of at least one additional year where uh, companies and individuals that had these policies in place as of October 1st of this year uh, would be able to renew them even if they don't meet the uh, specific requirements of, of the new law. So uh, they can renew them for at least one year. There are some requirements to go along with that, a notice uh, that they have to give a notice that spells out the exchange availability, uh, the benefits that would be uh, afforded through the exchange the uh, subsidies that would be available through the exchange that they uh, won't be able to get through through this type of plan. Um, and, uh, and if they meet those requirements, they can do that. Now, there are a lot of unknowns still as to whether, you know, how far this really goes. Uh, the president made clear last week that uh, it's going to be up to state insurance commissioners whether this is allowed in any particular state or not. Um, insurance companies, too, are on a very tight uh, timeline here uh, to get their rate filings done and get their plans filed and to get them approved and get people enrolled here within this enrollment period. So there are a lot of things we still don't know, but um, that, that kind of sums up the change that happened last Thursday. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You mentioned that there's a lot of things uh, we just don't know yet, but but what do we know? What is the reaction, Ben? You wrote that the states are, are kind of weighing their options here. Sure. Um, you have response from... Uh, on one side, the state insurance commissioners, and then you have uh, the response from the industry, the insurance industry. The responses from the state insurance commissioners, based on our research, research so far, basically falls into four different camps. Uh, you have uh, states like my home state of Alabama, where uh, as we stand today, the insurance commissioners are just saying, We've, we saw the press conference, we see the letter, we're examining uh, exactly what it means and, and checking our options. Um, in that group, uh, Alabama, Colorado, Connecticut, and uh, my guess is uh, many other states who haven't made any formal announcements uh, probably fall into that category. They're sort of taking a wait-and-see approach and exploring their options. Um, you have a group of states, too, that saw this coming beforehand and um, a few months ago allowed insurance companies to pre-renew these plans so that they could stay in effect through 2014. And so there's, this has no effect on those states. Uh, those, as far as our research shows, were Arkansas, Florida, Mississippi, and Wisconsin, and there are probably others. Uh, the third group of states, you have states who have said, yes, we support this initiative on the part of the president, and we're going to allow it if insurance companies want to. Um, we see California in that group and Oregon. Oregon just uh, yesterday, I think, or today, uh, said they're giving insurance companies until uh, this Friday to declare their intentions. Um, and then you have the last group of states, which is your home state, uh, Colin, of uh, Washington, 
where the state insurance commissioner has said, no, we think this is bad policy. Uh, we think that the Affordable Care Act is good policy and, and, and this allowing this uh, grace period undermines that. And so um, Washington and probably a few other states will say, no, this just doesn't work for us. Um, the most visible one so far is, is Washington State. Uh, from the insurance industry, um, I think they're basically of two minds on this. They haven't said very much about um, what their thoughts are and what their intentions are for the most part. But I think they're basically of two minds. Um, number one, there is a concern in the industry um, about the financial impact of this. Um, they've spent the last uh, two or three years, really, planning for January 1st, 2014, and planning for uh, most, if not all, of their insurance to be through an exchange, or at least uh, minimal essential uh, benefits, minimal essential coverage. Um, they weren't really planning for this. And so when they set the rates for the exchange, they were assuming that they would be the only game in town, or at least that plan design would be the only game in town, and now those assumptions aren't holding true. So I think there's a lot of concern if they do uh, take the president up on this grace period, what is the effect going to be um, on, uh, on them financially? They could take serious losses on the exchange plans if they don't have the influx of customers they thought they were going to have. On the other hand, I do think that insurance companies do, if, if their states allow them, they are going to want to do right by their customers to the extent that they can. And so I think they are looking really hard at what's possible and what's doable. And uh, if they can, I think you'll see some offerings, um, at least in the states that are going to allow it. I see. I see. It's going to be very interesting to see what the states do as they in the past have used uh, any leeway on the Affordable Care Act to, to diverge on policy quite a bit. Uh, once again, of course, that was Aaron Detling of Balch and Bingham for more of his insight on this change in policy and the Affordable Care Act in general, be sure to check out ACAReview.com, an excellent publication focused exclusively on the Affordable Care Act. And of course, for more of these video interviews from LXBN TV, just visit us at LXBN.com where you can find again those video interviews and curated commentary from the Lex Blog Network's more than 8,000 members. Thank you for joining me today, Aaron. My pleasure, Colin.